Greetings, I'm Caffeine Rage, and I'm back with the Sunday Sampler. This week, we're going to be taking a quick look at Dead in Vinland. This is a story-based management survival RPG thingy developed by CCCP and published by Playdust and Plugin Digital. And I want to be very clear. That's CCCP. This isn't the developers of Eve, all right? Because trust me, first time I looked at the store page for this, I saw CCP instead of CCCP. And we're saying C a lot too often without me speaking Spanish. So let's go right into this. So Death, Dead in Vinland, I keep on saying Death in Vinland, is a story-driven survival game where you're playing as a group of, well, survivors on an island and trying to defeat a evil tyrant who honestly is very absent in the story. So yeah, let's just dive right into things. I am going to hit new game just to show you the options here. We'll have our, we have our Sunday sampler save right there waiting for us. Just to show you the options here, mostly because that last line right there I love that game developers are still prodding EA for that line, but blah, 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 because I just wanted to show optional, uh, well, optional uh, difficulties here. The tutorial is completely targetable, and a quick start skips most of the opening cutscene and opening situations. True Viking Iron Man mode and three different difficulties, which either has a bonus to experience given and stats or a negative and more diseases and more uh, pestilence than yeah I'm gonna be showing you this on nice vacation mode which is still rather difficult and requires a fair amount of knowledge to get into this so we're gonna back out of this back out of this and we are going to continue the Sunday sampler save and something else I'm not playing on Iron Man mode but uh, I wanted to show you the option here that they have checkpoints for every single day, which honestly is rather nice. So we're just going to go current day, six characters on day 17. So it's short, uh, just under three weeks into the game. Dive in and loading screen. Good job cut out. Okay, and here is our camp. We're gonna basically go through an entire day's worth of survival here and show you, and I'll show you the basics of this. The camp is broken up into five different regions. There's the, I'm not even sure what they call these actually. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, they don't have proper names for them, but this is also the camp status, but this has a rest area, area in the healing tent, the crafting station, which we'll talk to him later. Uh, just general supplies and cooking, crafting and, well, I shouldn't say crafting, but gathering and more gathering. So this is a character driven game and a lot of the gameplay is revolving around Marker management and management of random chance to some degree because sometimes the game kind of fucks you. Some of the story uh, events do huge, huge swings on these five different meters, which we'll go to Eric and oh, no, go to his character sheet because I need to show you a few things here. All right, we have bio, which is just his backstory, traits, which we'll get to in a bit, but skills and stats. Well, well, I mean, stats are always showing here, but skills is also important for this. There are five different uh, states for it, or five different bars that you have to manage on all the characters. And you start with four. You start with uh, him, her, also her, and her. If any of the four original family members dies, it is game over. Which is incredibly infuriating, particularly how the game will screw you. 
especially if you're not aware of some of the tricks this game does. So, you have five bars that you have to uh, watch. Fatigue, hunger, hunger, sickness, injury, and depression. Depression, basically, if you fill it up, they kill themselves. Injury, they succumb to injury. Sickness, they succumb to disease. Hunger, they starve to death. Fatigue, they just kill over and die. Yeah, like you do. I had one event on a optional character, thankfully, but it, it pretty much kind of screwed me. Where... My depression was at the about the 60-ish percent mark. And I it started getting into her backstory. And it was an exceptionally depressing backstory. And it pushed her from 60% all the way to 100 and she committed suicide between the event and the weather, which is something else to keep in mind. It's storming right now. Which has its bonuses and its uh, downfalls. It's going to give us extra water, which is here. Or you can also see it here. Which will go through the full day in just a moment. Or start to, I should say. But uh, it gives increased depression. Uh, and at night... Eh, where is it? Uh, yeah, it's here. It also increases uh, depression, 7 to, nine, to 15. If it gets to 100, they kill themselves. So you can see how those two combined during a pre-planned story mode, and it kind of screwed me. And I had no way to really get out of it outside of just going back to a previous checkpoint and replaying part of the game. Which I didn't do for this because I started completely from scratch because I wanted to do some other things to correct some issues. But anyway, we are way, way off topic already. So, where was Elric? Uh, let's just go back to his characters. Okay. So, you have these five that you have to manage. And these are, in a way, controlled by the skills. Individual skills control how much impact a particular uh, thing does. So, he has high constitution. So he has a high efficiency for every constitution based action, which I believe forestry is one of them, or harvesting wood. So that impacts that. Oh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. And working in the forestry increases his depression, and it also increases his fatigue. And if you don't have a way to counteract that, you're going to have to focus on having people with high stats and high skills in order to uh, prolong things a bit longer until you're able to counteract it. So, you have physical, which is dictated by your overall fatigue. So, higher fatigue, it degrades these skills. So, you can see he has a 75, but also a 59 here. Well, that is counteracted by his fatigue and his injury. So he's uh, about half injured, so it decreases his physical skills by 16%, but also his fatigue brings down uh, 12%, which it also is uh, affected by the storm. And these also come into play with various uh, random events that you get through exploration, which we'll get to in a bit. But mental is uh, uh, fatigue and just uh, depression. Concentration is fatigue and hunger, and endurance is fatigue and injury. So, injury is a very important stat to watch out for, as well as fatigue. And all these stats are used in the various stations. So, if we take him and go over to the healing station, you could see, uh, I should have just been going here, but you could see that he has a 2 here. So, if it comes down to it, and he has to doctor, he's not going to be doing all that good. And this also increases depression and the healing. You can see where the stats are larger or highlighted. Well, I shouldn't say they're larger, but they're dropped down and highlighted. That is the stats that that particular job is enacting on. So he's in the lumber camp, he's getting depressed. And he's also getting tired. And fatigue is pretty much universal outside of the rest area. Uh, but yeah, the, we'll just go back to here. 
Uh, this is a micromanagement heavy game. So if you're not looking for something heavy on micro, then you are going to be disappointed. As well as if you're looking for something with a good fighting system. And we'll hopefully get into a fight uh, once we uh, start going through the day. Because as you explore, you may run into a roving group of bandits who you have to fight. But you have uh, action points and health points and all that. Uh, as well as a dual health system for some characters. Others, not so much. And there's the relationship system where all the characters have opinions of one another. And as they have higher opinions, if they're working together, they'll uh, boost the efficiency, but they'll also uh, help one another in general. So Elric will help his daughter occasionally. Uh, for a while, um, Bloodwin was helping uh, her daughter. I'm not sure what is triggering it just yet. Because I'm only 12 hours in the game, but I've restarted three or four times. So that is this system, and it's rather complex, but it's easy enough to pick up if you're not going to start min-maxing. If you're wanting to sit down and figure out the absolute best position for everyone, you're going to have a hell of a time. But all these uh, different positions, uh, they give different things. So the hunting camp, for example, uh, allows you to set up traps. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get any luck there. Or also, if I wanted Kari, instead of exploring, to send her off hunting, she'll get somewhere between three and seven raw meat, but she'll also lose three arrows. I have 18 arrows. The arrows are created over here in the forge. The forge is actually a very important building because it holds all, well, not all, but nearly all the crafting. So, you know, it takes tw uh, three arrows to make five, er uh, or sorry, three logs to make five arrows, or nine to make 15. So there's no benefit for outside just, yeah, you know, saving a little bit of time because, you know, one hammer versus three, that's the how long it takes. But you can see it's rather important to get that forge up and running. <laughs> and that's something that I had to restart to do because I didn't do the forge early enough. I was starting to hit issues. And the game will let you screw up because short of not having enough fire for certain uh, things like cooking, the game won't tell you that, okay, in order to use the hunting camp, you're going to need the forge to be able to make arrows. In order to use the, uh, or use the traps, you also need the forge. In order to use the, uh, the drying rack, which I haven't made yet, you need the cooking pot in order to make salt by boiling down seawater. It's a lot of trial and error, and it's not a bad thing, but I wish it was a little bit more explicit on what individual buildings do and what individual buildings need. And the reason why I was uh, a little caught off guard was I made the medical tent fairly, uh, or the healing tent fairly early, but it's also able to make the bandages, so I assumed that the hunting uh, camp would also be able to make traps, but you know, there's a little bit of disparity there. So let's just start the day. Uh, you start off on the weather screen, and I'll just kind of go through this a as we go. And uh, it tells you the special events and what's going to come up at the night. So uh, fatigue, it has a 25% increase, and depression has a 25% increase. Uh, but the benefit of this is I get somewhere between 6 and 12 portable and non-portable water at, uh, each half of the day. The day is split up into three, uh, well, let's call it phases, using a board game analogy. So we go over to here. This is the water supply, but we can also go here. We have 17 non-portable water, 3.5 uh, uh, portable or drinkable water. Water. It takes 5 to 10 uh, fire uh, percent of my fire and if my fire goes out I have to restart it with special kindling and that's rare to get so do not let your fire go out at a ratio of uh, uh, 0. 0.5 to 1 so I boil one unit of water a gallon whatever I get 0. 0.5 over here so that's good I could uh, use that 
Uh, I could just refill my water with that so I don't have to have someone hauling water. But on the downside, you know, I'm going to take more fatigue uh, at night. Well, well, at night, I'm going to take between five, uh, 7 and 15 de fatigue. I'm going to take 7 and 15 depression because I'm uh, in the rain. Then fire intensity is going to go down t uh, between 25 and 15. And at night, I'm only going to recover between 18 and 9 fatigue. And the fire is going to go down 30 to 20. But also special effects. It's good for the garden, the rain, but every half day, a random uh, camp station, you know, the water barrels, the cooking pot, harvesting camp, herbalist, that sort of thing, will take damage, so. Yeah, so let's get started. So first things first is we throw a log on the fire, or three, to get the fire intensity up. We don't have to boil water. But what we could do is make salt with the excess. So make salt. We, uh, like I said, I'm fairly uh, far along. So we'll make one more. Just building up my salt uh, for when I get the dryer. Or the drying rack. And we'll all check everyone. Everyone is okay on fatigue. Nobody's about to kill themselves. So, hey, that's a plus. And really need to focus on what I want to do because yeah this there's also depletable resources so I've been uh, leaning hard on the harvesting camp for berries which makes it so that each time I use it it's harder and harder to get the berries and requires more and more fatigue this is a very interesting system because it also allows a bounce back so if I stop uh, harvesting for a couple days it'll bounce back pretty quickly actually and same for most of these outside of the mining camp uh, but eh, it's mining so you don't exp exactly expect rocks to grow right so let's just uh, keep things like they are and we can also let's see we are setting up to make a religious idol which will help with my uh, you know eh, sanity problem the yeah, you know, old everybody wanted to kill themselves because they're stuck on an island. Which the story is a little vague still. The starting family, the first four, you know, him, her, her, and wait, where's Karin? Uh, her. No, I scrolled down. Uh, these first four were chased out of their home and shipwrecked. Don't know why yet. And the big bad of the story basically showed up, uh, demanded tribute, which you can see up here. I have four days to collect 30 wood. I have 16. So this lumber camp is going to get uh, uh, heavily used. Uh, big bad shows up and says, uh, give me tribute or I'll kill you. And that's pretty much the story. And the idea is we're going to go and kill him first, at least in theory. So... I want to send Kari off. I'm going to focus on exploration to hopefully pick a fight. Uh, I have a 46% chance to fight. And the reason why I want to get in a fight, because that is my big bug bugbear with the game. Uh, harvesting wood. Harvesting plants. Uh, we just got our garden up and running. So plowing is probably going to finish today. Uh, gathering berries which we could probably put her on something else eventually matter of fact well she's rested but all the, oh, oh, I didn't have to talk about the traits uh, as you level up which well, actually we'll wait for the traits uh, wait because we're due to get a level up on Wara uh, after the half day so let's just go ahead and do this so commit now we go through the cycle he starts using wood and uses a fire crystal and gets 50% of the auto done. And he gets his skill ups, so but he also gets his fatigue. Weather effects, so there's the water refreshing. We get some more harvesting, some fruit. I'm just going to fast forward. And there's our level up, so we'll talk about that. Some hemp, eh? Yeah. A little bit of fatigue there. Some gardening. So did that actually finish? Get wood. 
get depressed, take damage on the wood shop uh, thing, of course. Explore, get some exploration, which we'll talk about in a bit. And of course, you don't get in a fight because I wanted you to get in a fight. Uh, so we have a couple of things. First, we have uh, the camp condition, which I'm not terribly worried about just yet. As uh, the condition takes, uh, well, degrades, it hurts the impact of that. So uh, that was the harvesting or the the lumber camp. So good condition, 10% uh, less wood chopped, but it takes rope. So we'll just go ahead and repair that. So that is pretty much a turn. Don't really want to adjust anything. Oh, we have our level up, so we could do this. So every time you level up, this is my seventh time, you get five random traits. And yes, you can get the same trait to pick from twice. I've had it happen several times. And some of these are double-edged swords, like talented. 50% uh, to XP gains, but I lose five endurance and five concentration, so. I would, lose, I would drop down to 39 concentration and what was the other one? And of endurance, which endurance, 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 endurance. Where is endurance? Because I don't see endurance here. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Oh, endurance skills. Oh, oh okay, okay. Uh, I, I just saw endurance and concentration. I was looking for a skill. I was like, did I miss endurance as a skill? So I lose 50% XP on uh, concentration and endurance skill checks. So concentration checks, so crafting checks, and endurance uh, checks, which is my expiration. Not good. And you can see a lot of these are actually uh, uh, double-edged swords, but... Plus 25% to XP gains in general is pretty good. So we'll take that. And that adds to her traits. So you can see she has a negative a traits. She has a plus 25% to sickness increases, a negative crafting, and a negative hunting. But she just got the XP increase. She has sickness, a negative sickness increase. That's a good thing. Negative fatigue increase. So as the characters build up, you start to get a general feel for not just how they uh, work, but also you could tweak them to an extent, especially if you get a bad role. Like Kari got plus intelligence because a lot of her other ones were just terrible. So, yeah, or at least on that particular level up. And plus she's a, a bit, uh, well, she's a moody teenager. I mean, that's what she is. So you can see here we're starting to get problems with the harvester because of just the resources, but did we actually get this done? Oh. Uh, check garden stay. Oh, 96%. We'll be able to at least show that off though. And change our food source. So yeah, that's pretty much a half a turn and we'll just do it again because oh, we, we got some exploration. So. We have this come up. Ah, the skull tree. The The map is semi-randomly generated, I think. Or at least the events on the map is uh, random because the overall map is the same between playthroughs, at least as far as I could tell. But the individual events, the individual checkers on the uh, map have been different, so we got the skull tree. So, you know, just you know, take some skulls. And we'll take Kari. Which I'm probably butchering a pronunciation of her name, but... Uh, most of the, the skulls seem human. Some from adults, some smaller ones from children. A very few skulls uh, look like animal ones, but you can't tell which. Take them. 80% chance to succeed due to agility. And that's where the overall state of the character really comes into play. Because if things are starting to go poor, that agility uh, starts to degrade because of injury, because of fatigue. So, take that, and we succeed the check. 
You keep your calm, untie some skulls, nothing happens. Get some bones, some rope. But then we could go and search the tree. And here's a multi-roll check. So once again, this is harvesting, agility, and courage. You can see how the changes are. You know, like for example, she has a 72 in courage, but because of uh, fatigue, she's losing 12. Uh, because of fatigue, she's losing 13 on her agility. Because of uh, sickness and fatigue, she's losing one on her harvesting skill. So we'll just go ahead and we'll, we'll put her again. Let her steal the show. The opening of the truck is rather big. You could almost stand up inside. The tree itself is not very tall, although climbing it uh, can help you reach the taller trees nearby. So we could get climb inside or or climb or get inside. Let's get inside. I haven't done that one. So we pass the check. As soon as you enter it, you're struck with a horrible sensation, paralyzing every muscle in your body. You begin to feel cold and hot at the same time, and your heart is racing. You begin to hear a morbid leather tree uh, coming from uh, very far or dangerously close. You can't tell. It takes you a formal amount of willpower to break the spell and run away from the cursed tree. So I take some depression. I take some fatigue. And then I... Uh, lose any other interactions with the tree because she doesn't want to go near it and she tells everyone else to stay the fuck away so next exploration and like i said the exploration is somewhat random based on the tiles but uh things on the beach will always be on the beach so you can adjust it somewhat so we can go back here and like we have a uh, uh, may have uh, done a little bit of exploration saved it for the video you have a sunken long ship in another playthrough i had it show up over here or down here or up here i've actually experienced this a few times so we'll just go ahead and do this so shoot the bird not a great chance on anyone just due to fatigue and depression but i will try it you notice a creepy vulture hanging on the mast of the ship, guarding it. Uh, you have to make the bird go away. I can frighten it or kill it. Killing it, I have a 41% chance. And I need at least one arrow. We'll try it anyway. Ah, I failed. You take your bow and aim at the creepy vulture. The arrow flies through the air and lands on the mast. Startled, the uh, scavenger squawks and circles around you, threatening. It, it, you're ready yourself to dodge an attack. Suddenly it vomits on you instead. You were not prepared for that. <laughs> uh, you run away, clearly disgusted by this odd defense mechanism. It'll take you hours to get rid of the goopy uh, substance off your clothes. You tr really hope no one saw that. And you become more depressed and you get a little sickness. So, yeah, because of just the mood everybody's in, I don't think this is a good thing to do. So, we could just leave it for later. So, we're still crafting the religious idol. And, uh, overall, this game is very micro-intensive. You're having to micromanage a lot of people. So, you know, she's getting depressed. So, I probably want to send her to the tavern to sit and talk, but the tavern has to have at least two people, so I have to look for someone else that needs to sit down and have a chat. So her father is also getting up there. Her, uh, her mother, uh, sorry, I always I have to take a moment to remember which one is which, because that's the wife, that's the uh, uh, sister-in-law. Uh, her mother is also getting depressed. Her uh, aunt is also getting depressed, so I could uh, set two of them there to kind of counteract it and I could also you know have have a beer or just you know, use an item and here have a beer and she's now vomiting great here have another beer or I could uh, give her that to counteract the vomiting and try it again oh great she's drunk well on the plus side she's no longer depressed Damn kids. So we'll just do another search. We should finish the religious idol, and we do. So each character uh, covers between zero and uh, five depression each night. 
He's a little bit more fatigued. The weather effects hurt the tavern. Can't really get more water because we're full up. More fruit. But yeah, it does. the game does get a little tedious because of the amount of time it takes to get through the day. And this is day 17. As the as you get more characters and start doing more things, it you know, starts to get longer and longer. The days were a lot shorter when I had just four characters. When I got six, yeah, things started to get a lot longer. So we got a new area. And of course you didn't start combat. Oh, my big beef with the combat. Well, for one, we'll take a look and see what we got at least. Ooh, this is new. Uh, inspect. Strange lights are shimmering deep below the surface at a specific point. You can't help but you can't make out what are the cause of the lights. Sometimes you feel like you see a glowing sheet, but you can't be sure. Whether you, you uh, when you swim uh, near the lights, you feel a certain warmth, but, but like it was coming from inside your body. That's not unpleasant. So I could relax two times to let's see if that actually counteracts some depression. And let's send her. You dare uh, a swim where the lights shine bright, you instantly feel something inside your body. As if you are back in the womb of your loving mother. You float there for a while in a dream state. Are your worthies leaving your soul? Depression, wow, way down. Suddenly a terrible cough uh, wakes you from your dream. You swim ashore, and your mind free but feeling sick. So it's a counteracting thing. Interesting. And if we try to do the red thing and immediately, uh, uh, removes this so it's something that you could try to manage and there's a, like I said it's all management and a lot of trying to counteract things but the big one is probably that tribute because the tribute could be quite bothersome especially according to some of the spoilers that I've seen on the list of tribute items so Unfortunately, I really can't show combat, and I don't want this to be an hour-long video. My big beef with the combat is that it's rather lackluster, and it takes ages to do. But my primary problem with it is that the stats are so low on everything. As a matter of fact, uh, let me just go back to camp, and I'll show you what I mean. We'll bring up his stats and go to fight stats. You can see he only has 14 health. But he also has a split health bar, so uh, the first four in this is a freebie, essentially. If he takes uh, red health, and uh, all characters have white health, so yeah, uh, she doesn't. So if I take her into a fight and she takes even one bar of health, she takes injury damage. So she gets injury to refill her health, and the higher her injury goes the more severe the wound she gets. Which I don't think I... Oh, no. Uh, well, technically, Drunk as a wound. You can see it drops her courage, her intelligence. Oh, sorry. It raises her courage, it drops her wisdom and intelligence. Uh, he has back pain, uh, which is uh, causing harvesting issues. Unfortunately, I don't have any injuries going on. Uh, but uh, taking uh, injuries, especially going deeper in, it causes more and more injury. And once again, remember, if this bar fills up, it's game over. And another problem with the fight system is that, well, the placement on the field of all the uh, playable characters seems to be random. So, I could get it where my two guys with shields, uh, her mother and her father, you can see she has a shield and she also has a lot of white uh, health bars. She'll end up on the back 
row of the of the fight. Uh, this is essentially a JRPG style uh, fighting system. She'll end up in the back row, and her daughter, if I take if she gets uh, pulled into a fight, will be on the front row. Or sometimes she'll be uh, her daughter will be on the back row. Or she'll be in the back row, and her father will be on the front row. It really makes no sense whatsoever, and because the health bars are so short or uh, so granular, or I should say, uh, lack of granular, uh, gran granularly, well, I'm probably butchering words now. It's very easy to lose a character very quickly because, oh well, my character was pulled into fight in a bad position. And all the enemies ganged up on it. Or even worse, uh, there's one particular enemy type that gives damage resistance to everyone else. And you look at these damage numbers. 2 to 4. 1 to 3. And it also changes on the row. So, you know, if he's further back and runs forward, he uh, basically builds up speed. But, you know, if he's on the front row, you know, 1 to 3. Um... 2 to 4, 1 to 8, but with a low hit chance, and that's even before uh, any effects on it. 2 to 6, also with a low hit chance. So, one damage resistance makes a hell of a lot of difference. And just because the health bars are so short, it's very easy to lose someone very quickly. And that builds up the injury, which causes a niggling injury, or a, a trade here. And some of them, especially when you start getting in the 60 and 70 range, which I had Kari actually, or Kari, Kari, uh, actually end up there. Where she was pretty much ganged up on instantly in a fight, brought up to about a 70% injury. And she took what was called a fatal wound, which was constantly giving her an, an additional injury of bleeding, taking up her injury further, and had several massive, massive, I mean, on order of drunk level skill and stat drops. It was horrendous. And if I hadn't already built this medical tent, this healing tent, it would have been game over because she's also start one of the initial four, which means that she has to live. And like I said, the game will just utterly screw you at points. And that's going to be a huge turnoff for a lot of people because this is essentially the randomness of a roguelike or roguelite. And the uh, tendency to just utterly screw you over with a management sim on top of it. And a story-based one at that. So, going to replay, you're going to go through the same story bits over and over again. Outside of the randomness that you get on the exploration map here. And also the characters that you get. Because I didn't get him on my first three playthroughs. I didn't get her. Actually, they come as a pair, by the way. On my first three playthroughs. I got someone else. Which, actually, hang on. let's go ahead and do the garden so I can show you that. Because we got this done. So, let's just set some vegetables. And this will actually grow very fast. But the vegetables are poor and they have to be cooked. Which, they have to be cooked in the cooking pot. And you can see... Uh, yeah, uh, it, they're not terrible for hunger, but they cause depression. So, yeah, that's why I had the cooking pot before the garden. Last time I did it the other way around and we had a bunch of vegetables just rotting. So, yeah, it, the, but getting back to the combat, the combat is just, it's not poor, but it's a flaw. And also, I have to admit that sometimes these don't make much sense because... Uh, especially Kari's um, uh, effects here. And it seems to be random on which one it happens. Uh, especially uh, if she's going to move. Because I've had her uh, be in the back row and she hadn't moved. She still just does the damage. You have to 
pay attention to that. Or it's just bugged, which is also a very big possibility. It's incredibly frustrating. I, I do not enjoy the combat whatsoever. I wish I could just skip it. Which, thankfully, I could tone down the uh, time the combat, uh, the amount of combat, just by focusing on stealth. So it drops it down to a 30% chance. And But this does go up as I explore more. So, yeah, let's just end the day and we'll end the video. I actually ended up talking a lot longer than I expected on this, so we'll just top off the fire and hit end day, and we'll go to the last section, which has some story bit, most likely. Uh, I've been thinking about home lately. Yes, we all miss home, but no, no, not this home. Our first home. Like, oh, you don't uh, need to think about that. But I want to remember. Do you remember our dad? Our real dad? I was too young. I remember mom's voice. She was singing Lobo Boss for you. But dad, I can't even remember his face. You were young and Thorvald was kind to us. He was the, the only father as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yes, but despite the fact that he killed our real family, yes, he was rather kind. Well, they are Vikings. Don't talk about that. You always get upset. You can't understand, you were young, but I have memories of the life that was stolen from us. And that hurts the relationship and also causes depression. So we saw 11 depression there, and then another, let's all say about 10, even though she doesn't seem to mind the rain that much. And then day effects, hunger, dehydration. So we have water to deal out. Essentially, one water gets rid of one de uh, dehydration, and you don't always get that de dehydration. I mean, you get to you and her. She didn't get dehydrated. She was fine. So, I'm just going to dole out water to everyone. I could try to stretch my resources and only have a 75% chance, but really no reason to with the rain. So, there we go. Next. So, dehydration is taken care of. Now we dole out food. Unfortunately, I just have berries and meat. We are in the process of getting the garden online. So everyone's going to have to go a little hungry right now. I'm basically going to try to satiate people. So... And just knock them down a little bit. The thing is, in the next couple of days, when the garden uh, starts producing vegetables... Yes, uh, the garden... Uh, produces vegetables that quickly. That's part of the reason why I had trouble with it before. So you can see she uh, she got di diarrhea though from the berries. Here, have a berry. And you can see it turns green so it's dealing a less issue. So uh, negative 8% versus here negative 10%. It's not a huge difference but with how low some of the stats are in this game it does make a difference. So, here, have a berry. And have a berry. So, most people are in the green. And I do have non-perishable foods, but... The thing is that these are perishable. These will rot. So, I have a 10 to 50% chance... Uh, 10 to 20 to 50% of the stock will turn to rotten food each night. I'm only keeping one for bait. That's why I'm not using that. But also, is a lot higher of... Uh, hunger. Uh... Uh, uh, ref uh, removal. So, 4 to 8 versus 8 to uh, 18. So, versus uh, my non perishable. So, next trait effects. So, she has a trait that gives her extra fatigue and makes her a little hungrier. Sickness is going off. Depression. Uh, traits are running out. She's hung over. He gets a sore throat. Night effects. Everyone gets uh, some sleep. Depression uh, goes down a little bit because of the idol. And that's the end of the day. And look, it's going to rain again. And that's really the, uh, yeah, the cycle of the game. It's managing all these stats, and I mean all of them. Because right now, he is uh, highly depressed, so he needs to go off-duty. Uh, I gave her some beer, so she doesn't have to worry about it, but, you know, she's a pretty bad state. 
she's also rather tired, so I may want to swap her out and for her over here so she could rest. Which leaves only a few people actually working. I don't want to do any crafting right now because we need to get that tribute, so he go he's going to go on that. And she... Uh, we're going to... Hang on, let me take a look at the garden, garden state. It's 20% grown. It's best if it gets here. It's the harvest wolf, it gets to 80. So we're looking at another day or two. So we probably need to still uh, hit the that, or we just have her hunt. Yeah, I'm just kind of speeding along through this. And just next day, or next phase, and that's really the cycle. So we're energized, get some depression gone. A little bit of charisma as well, about them just sitting down and having a chat. Yeah, a little husband wife time. Water refills. Oh, I didn't replenish the fire, but it's fine for now. Oh, she is deathly fatigued. She loses three arrows, goes hunting, and gets four meat. And a little bit of injuries. So, yeah, that's the, really the cycle of the game. So, I think that is pretty much done here. So, as always, constructive feedback is greatly appreciated. Either in the comments below, or if you don't really have anything to say, but want to let me know that you've enjoyed, or you even hated this, the appropriate buttons are there. And subscribe if you see more of the Sunday Sampler or my other content. Thank you for watching, and I think we are pretty much done here. I mean, we don't really need to do anything else. So we have our inventory, which some items give pure stat bonuses. Some are, uh, are well, as you saw, reduces depression, reduces fatigue. So there are other ways than just burning Tom. I, I love drinking alone is not a solution. <laughs> no, but it is a problem. Right, we'll just set her here and have her cook. Yeah, make some meat. And throw a log on the fire. Yeah, I think we're done here. Overall, I don't think the game is bad. It's just, it's tedious. And maybe it's just because I played in a too big a chunk to be able to prepare for this. But yeah, we're done here. I'll see you next time.